Hey everybody, welcome back to Brian Rashid Global. I am super grateful that you're taking a few moments out of your day to hear about what's happened for the last five years for me and the lessons that I would like to share with you in the singular hope that you may find a little gem or a little motivation or a little clarity around something that I say into your own life. The fun thing about doing this video series for you all is that I'm looking at myself and I can literally see my hands in the lens, which is kind of weird. But I'm looking at myself and I can see myself in the mirror of the lens. And essentially what I'm hoping is that when you watch me, you see me in the shirt and the hair and other things, but you are actually seeing yourself. Because advice, my friends, is autobiography, which means what works for me might not work for you, but what works for me might work for you. And that's why we connect as humans to pick the things that work and leave the things that don't. So this episode, of Brian Rasha Global, we're gonna just briefly share with you some of the things that I've learned over five years being an entrepreneur and starting my own business. And the first and most important thing, and this is for anyone out there that is an entrepreneur that is thinking about leaving their job or quitting their job or wants to start their own thing or is somewhere in between. Maybe you wanna keep your job but you also wanna have a side hustle, side business. I think that anyone that wants to run their own thing, there are several things that you have to keep in mind that are going to make your journey a little bit smoother. Number one, realize that your journey will not be smooth. I know I just kind of, I get that, but it's true. This entrepreneurship uh, at this point in our in our culture is a very cool thing, right? Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everyone on Instagram wants to say that they're a founder and a CEO and all this thing. It's a popular thing right now. Here's, let me tell you what's, what really happens as an entrepreneur. It's lonely. Everything is on you. You have to invest yourself 1000% into what you're doing. If you don't, you will not succeed. Let me just repeat that. If you are not willing to invest everything that you have into your team, into your product, into your clients, into your thing, you won't succeed. Number two, it's going to be bumpy. Let me share with you a little story. If you guys know my spiel, you probably know, you've probably heard this before, but for the first 18 months of my business, I calculated every single penny that I spent. I'm not even kidding you, I still have the spreadsheet. Every single penny that I spent for 18 months and I budgeted and budgeted and budgeted and I I ate $3 Trader Joe's salads four times a day or three times a day. I cooked every single one of my own meals. I was living in San Francisco. All my friends who were working at Adobe and Google and Airbnb were going out to fancy restaurants. I would always make up an excuse as to why I couldn't go because the truth was if I went out for one nice meal or two nice meals, that meant that I literally wouldn't have enough money to pay the rent to keep the business alive. And for me, the business was way more valuable than the gin and tonics, way more valuable than the nice steak, way more valuable than the happy hours. So that for me was the first thing. The second thing I would say about the obstacles is you have to be creative about how you overcome them. You know, and so one way is the obstacles. If you're not making enough money, make more money. But sometimes that's harder said than easier said than done. And so what you have to think about is what are the assets that I have? Is it time? Is it an apartment? Is it whatever? So in my case, it was time and writing talent and apartments. And so what I would do is I would write things for people on different platforms, whether it be my LinkedIn, my blog, or my contribution at Forbes and Huffington Post in exchange for kind of brand equity or in, in, in a more kind of hustle grind way, I had a nice apartment uh, in San Francisco and I would rent it out on Airbnb. I would rent out my apartment on Airbnb. People would come, they would stay. I would make a profit on that apartment. I would use that money to pay the rent in that same apartment, to pay for my food for the month and to invest back into my business while I was sleeping on my friend's couches or renting really cheap, shitty rooms in Oakland. And um, that's how I stayed alive for many, many, many months. And so you have to get scrappy and creative. That's the second thing. The third thing is you have to be militant about surrounding yourself with good people. And this for me has been the biggest game changer of all. I've always been able to surround myself with good people, but when you are on your own as an entrepreneur, you need to have people looking out for you. You need to have people that you give to because then they wanna give back. 
you know you need to have that 5 10 15 20 group of people that you can bounce ideas off of and you can they can serve as an a sounding board or they can serve to help you get new clients the important thing about the connection game is that you give them just as much as they give you otherwise they'll burn out and then they won't want to help you anymore the next thing that i would say is you have to really 100 percent believe it's one thing to be all in but you can never be all in if you don't 100 percent believe in what you're doing you know and 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 you have to really check out why you want to do what you want to do you know i make a tremendous amount of sacrifices in my own personal life to have what i have and to continue to build what i build which is i want to influence millions and millions of people all over the world to be able to make money doing what they love to be able to put aside the fear and put aside the excuse put aside all the things that they were told growing up as to why they can't do what they want to do and show them that yes with enough talent and a whole lot of hard work and a little bit of luck you can have it too that's why i do what i do that's why i put in long hours that's why it's it's sometimes difficult to sustain relationships because I believe so much in this. And so you have to believe so much in this. And then the last thing I would say is you really have to enjoy the process. And if you find yourself, I know it sounds so cliche and I, it's, I know it's, it might be even frustrating, but if you find yourself saying, I'll be happy when, and then you put a thing at the end of that sentence, I will 100% guarantee you, you'll lose. Because the problem with I'll be happy when X is that X is never, ever going to be good enough for you. Because then when you get X, then you'll stretch more. And by the way, ambition is good. I love stretching. I stretch as far as I possibly can stretch, but I'm enjoying every single stretch. I'm not putting my happiness contingent upon an X or a Y or a Z because when you get $10,000 in the bank, you want 100,000. When you get 100,000, you want a million. When you have 15 people in the staff, you want 30. When you have 30, you want 50. And if you're only happy when you get to 10 and 30 and 50, then you're gonna miss the entire 99% of what's really fun about entrepreneurship, which is the journey, the documentation, the grind, the fun moments that you have in the office that you laugh about, the videos you look back on and say, oh my God, the articles you look back on and say, did I really write that? But you knew in that moment that when you wrote that article, you were all in. And this, for that one minute, for that one hour, for those 10 hours, is the only thing on the planet that you wanted to be doing. I wish that for all of you. Thank you for watching.